Are you going to let this define you and never walk again? Or are you going to fight? She, like all of us, has had such a weird year. Hi, Brooke. How are you? <laughs> oh, gosh. I am so happy to be alive. I can't even tell you. And I, I mean that as seriously as it sounds. <laughs> I'm just happy to be able to right? walk again. <laughs> It wasn't enough. The pandemic wasn't enough. So, <laughs> right. That, let's let's explain for th those of you who might not understand. This wasn't just a pandemic. This started with a balance board, right? Yeah, and I lost my balance. <laughs> um, <laughs> I have been doing this for for years now, and it's just this little thing that I could never do. So I sort of mastered it, and it's a balance. You stand on this piece of board and you balance on it and it's really good for your core and I finally mastered it and this guy said to me oh you, you make it look so easy I could never do that when anybody says I don't care who you are if they say I never can do that or I can't so easily I, I go into like mom mode and, I'm, and I said no no you can you really can and if this matters to you then you just have to practice it every day and I used to not be able to do it and and look I'll show you and I got on it and I did my little thing and then I turned around to, you know, quench my ego to have him go, oh, right. like, yes, thank you. Oh, and, you're amazing. Yeah, wow, aren't you the best <laughs> in the world? And so I came back and you really are not supposed to change your focus. And I flew up in the air and landed oh. on the one piece of cement that was in, in the gym. And I broke my femur just clean and in half. And I'm so lucky I didn't hit my head. I... I have 14 screws and two full rods that go into my hip and all the way down to my knee. And they sent me home one night after a few weeks and I woke up the next morning and my arm looked like Popeye's and uh, they rushed me back in the hospital and I had a staph infection and then I had a blood clot and, you know, it was the doctors were just so dismayed and they didn't know I was in the hospital for a month and I was just so happy that I was alive with after my third blood transfusion, I just, and I was all by myself. So I couldn't have my family come and I, I know. And, and, and yeah, I was just going to point out to everybody, the last place you want to be during a pandemic is in the hospital. You can't have your family. No, you can't have your family. You can't have anything in that. Your schedule is all every few hours, sometimes every 15 minutes. There's a new crew of people checking on you. So it's sort of like sleep deprivation as well. The fear that I saw in the doctor's eyes behind the masks, I think that's, right. that was the, that's when I, I thought, okay, you, what can you control? What can you control? And I thought, okay, the only thing I control is my physical PT, my, my PT. And so I sort of became very, very focused on just getting out of the hospital because the doctor finally said to me, mm -hmm. he's like, I've got to get you out of here. The longer you're in here, the, the worse it is. The worse it off is. it is, right? I I'm so, so they sorry. Were, you know, in the wake of also and seeing the tragedy and, and, and when hearing the stories and, um, and you know, it was the front line of it, right. And, well, and not, and it being not associated with that, you know, there was this guilt too, because I was, um, you know, I didn't have COVID and I felt so terrible for the people who've lost loved ones. And so there was this, I was trying to, you know, keep everything into perspective. It was the worst injury I've ever had, but I still was counting my blessings that I was able to be taken care of. And, oh. um, you know, that it was one of those things where, and then my daughter asked me if I was going to die and it, you know, oh it was God. see your, your children be scared of losing a parent is just, it just was such a helpless feeling. But you know what, here's the thing that I, I really, you know, I didn't need to slow down. I didn't need to have a pray and come to Jesus moment. You know, I wasn't moving too fast in my life. I, I was honestly, but I was asked to, to, really look deep inside of myself and say, what are you really made of? Like, are you going to let this define you and never walk again? Or are you going to fight tooth and nail? And you'd be so surprised how powerful your body is and how much it wants to heal.